Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. This week, we're actually going to get started on a new series about how to build your very own, and your first most likely, level 1 high-powered rocketry to get your level 1 certification through TRA or NAR. Um, those are uh, two organizations we'll talk about here in a moment, but this right here is my level 1 cert rocket. So you can tell it's, it's about 3-ish, or it's about 3.5, 4 feet tall, 3-inch um, diameter tube, Fins. My entire rocket is fiberglass, aside from the nose cone, which is plastic. Uh, basic nylon shock cord on the inside, but we'll be going over all of the basics of high power rocketry design as we move through a series on your first steps for building your very own high power rocket. Guys, so let's jump into this. I'm calling this series It's All Up From Here, Getting Started in High Power Rocketry. So first off, your basic level one requirements. The simplest form of this is you just have to build and launch a rocket with an H or I class motor and recover that rocket. The hardest part about this is actually recovering your rocket because upon recovery, your rocket actually has to still be functional, completely and totally functional. If you break a fin off, if it's loose and can't be flown again, if you lose the nose cone, you lose your parachute, um, even if you don't come down under a parachute, like you come down, actually you don't need a parachute technically for level one, you can come down under a streamer, but you have to come down under chute and be able to put your rocket back up on the pad with a new motor and launch again. Um, and that's very hard to do for a lot of us. I've watched a lot of people not surge just because of that. So it's really important to make sure that when you're building your rocket or assembling it from a kit, that you make sure it is strong enough to handle uh, heavy impacts. So usual altitude you'll hit is about 2,000 feet. That's pretty normal for a level one. So as you're getting started, you're also going to have to choose a rocketry association to join, whether that is TRA, the AAA Rocketry Association, or NAR, National Association for Rocketry. Choosing one is heavily dependent upon where you live in the United States, since both of these are United States-based companies. If you're in Canada, there's also the CAR and other countries have some other things, but those are the three ones that I've dealt with. And for the point of this, since I live in the US, we're sticking with the two US based ones. Where I live here in the Midwest is predominantly TRA. So if you're a Midwest based individual, I recommend joining Tripoli because you're gonna have a lot easier time finding a prefix to help you get everything done. But be sure wherever you live, check with your local high power group or the launch site coordinators as to which organization they are part of. That will greatly uh, reduce the difficulty of you getting your certifications as you go from level one, level two to level three, should you choose to go past level one. Next big question that a lot of people have is a kit build versus a scratch build. Kit build is just like buying an Estes kit out of a store. You just read the instruction and it comes with everything you need. It doesn't come with glue or a motor. Those are the only two things you usually have to buy additionally, but it comes with your nose cone tubes, fins, and pretty much it's just assemble and go. Uh, scratch build is considered much more difficult. It actually requires you to model uh, the rocket in a software called Open Rocket or Roxim. Most people use Open Rocket though, because that's a open source and free program to get a hold of. All of your parts have to be bought and manufactured by you. They're not going to come pre-made, although there are methods to get them assembled for you, even when doing a scratch build kit or made for you, even when doing scratch build. I find scratch build very rewarding. All of my rockets so far have been scratch builds. So the vendors, if you're doing a scratch build, or even if you're just buying a kit rocket, these are the vendors I love to go with. So Apogee has great kits parts and motors for you to be able to get wildman has the same thing as well wildman is one of the most popular kits to buy is any of his kits uh, mad cow is a great place for kits and parts i love their sales that they have around uh, labor day and just uh, black friday their sales are great and then my personal favorite motors to use are aerotex i've seen too many ceceronis blow up on the pad that i just don't like using them in my rockets it's too high a risk for me it's still a possibility that your rocket's going to blow up even with an Aerotech motor, but I like the quality of Aerotechs a lot better. And you can buy Aerotechs at both Apogee and Wildman. 
you can buy uh, Cesaronis as well and get get the motors you need. But that's that's your basics right there of what you need to get started and where you need to start going to look for the things you need. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and stick around for the next video coming out here soon as I'll be going over the basics of building your first level one rocket if you're going the scratch build route.